Church in Santa Monica, California. Happy New Year to you. We and the church begin the year at the beginning of Advent, and today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Welcome to worship. We will begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise to you, O God, our salvation who is near. You hold us in our waiting and keep us awake to the world. You show up in our lives at unexpected times. Bless us as we light this candle to keep vigil for your arrival. We trust that even though we do not know the day or the hour, you hurry to gather all people to your peace.
God be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy New Year! Good morning, friends. Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. As we light a candle today and start the season of Advent, we also start a new year in the church. We get to start over. Everything is fresh and new, just as Christ makes us new every day. The color is blue, the color of hope. We are hopeful for the coming of Christ, that Christ will bring peace and joy into our world once again. Today in the gospel, we hear about waiting and getting ready. We are waiting for Christ to come once again. Christ comes to us at Christmas as an itty bitty baby, but he also comes to us in our friends and family and we wait as Christ will come again. Say a prayer with me, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for those who are all around us, who help us to get ready for the coming of Christ. Help us prepare our hearts for Jesus once more. Help us to help those around us and to share God's love in this weary world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 64, beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Receive with the Spirit is saying to God's people, thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels, then gather his elect from the four winds, from the four ends of the earth, to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as a branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with its, his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch, therefore keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. <coughs> or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. I read that line in our first reading. And as soon as I did, I felt this deep longing to hold clay in my hands, to mold it and shape it. Plato is a little different than clay, but it is still part of the experience. I don't know if you've had the experience of forming and shaping clay before, maybe on a potter's wheel, or maybe even forming it like I am right now with a pinch pot or just freehand. I've done both, and admittedly I'm not very good. I've enjoyed it though. In seminary, I took a January term at a retreat center called Grunewald Guild in Washington State, and part of our work was to make pottery. And I tried to make it smooth and beautiful and lovely, and it didn't work. And so I decided to go with it, and I made lumpy, bumpy pottery. I called it my Lumpy Bumpy series. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. It's quite fun because I went with the lumpy part. That works, right? I don't know. Anyway, one of the things that I love about clay is that mistakes never mean the end of a project. For you see, if I, for example, made a mistake here, I wouldn't throw this away. I could take it and reshape it and form it again. If you're throwing a pot on the wheel and it collapses over, you just mush it back together, reconstitute it with some more water, there's probably a baptismal imagery in there, and then you start anew. It's not like a pen line on a piece of paper. When you make a mistake, you can't really use that piece of paper again if you're trying for a very particular image. But with clay, you make a mistake, and unless it's all dried out and fired in a kiln, you can still 
start again. It's always an opportunity for a new beginning, a do-over. You know, there's this longing that arose in me when I read these words from Isaiah. And it wasn't just about holding this clay in my hand. It was also a deep desire for God's presence to be molding and shaping my own life, my own heart, to shape the world that we live in. I want to experience God at work in this place, in these people, in myself. Like those people in the Isaiah text called for God, I want God to come down, to break into this space and to do God's work, to mold me and shape me, to mold the world and shape us anew into something better. And that's at the heart of my faith, this certainty that God is in fact doing that, Not just in the future, when we have the second coming of Christ that we're waiting for, but in the small, subtle ways that happen right now, in our daily lives, where we are formed and shaped by the God who loves us, who's making us and the world we live in a better place, one day to the next. I suppose... That's my hope shining through. In this season of Advent, hope is at the heart of it. Here at Mount Olive, we're focusing on the theme, a new hope. Hope is the thing with feathers, Emily Dickinson writes. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings a tune without words and never stops. Hope is that thing in my inner being, in my heart, that lifts up with the anticipation of things getting better. Hope is the thing that keeps me going, that keeps on going, that keeps on singing, that never stops at all, that expects that things can and will change. Hope is the thing that longs for God to come and form and shape us anew so that we can be better, so that the world can do better and expects that goodness to come, for God to come and make things better and watches and waits for it to take place. This season of Advent is a season of hopeful waiting. We wait for the Christ child, yes, but we also, as our texts call us to wait for the second coming of Christ, wait for Christ to come again, and we wait with expectation and hope for the stars to fall and for Christ to come in power and glory. I know it seems odd to wait for something that almost sounds so very frightening, where the sun is darkened and the moon does not give its light and the powers of heaven are shaken and the stars fall. And yet, I think it is this longing in me for God to mold us and shape us and change the world for the better that looks forward to that with anticipation and trust that God is the potter and we are the clay And all the world is the clay, which means we can be reconstituted, formed anew into something better, which is different than the end of all things, from being cut off, thrown out, cut down. You understand, do you? My expectation is hopeful because I trust that God is going to cherish us as God's clay and keep us around and form us and shape us to do something even better with who we are and what we are. We will be different 
The world will be different. It will be better. And I know it's not easy. Being worked on by the Creator never is. But I'm excited to see what is to come. It's why I want to keep awake, keep alert, not out of fear of what's to come, but out of excitement, like a kid on Christmas Eve waiting to hear signs and sounds of Santa. I'm so excited for what Christ is able to do in the world. I want to keep awake, keep alert, keep watch, so that even now, I can see the work of the potter shaping the world to be a better place, shaping me to be a better me. Not in those grand ways that we're waiting for with the second coming of Christ, but in small ways, simple ways, here and now, in this place. I wonder. I wonder where you long for God to do some reforming, reshaping in your life and in the world. I wonder, I wonder where you feel or see signs of God's love reshaping and the work happening even now. I wonder, I wonder what you hope for. I wonder what you hope God will bring about in our world, in our lives. Let us pray. God, Stir in us your hope. Shape us as you see fit. Keep us awake and alert, seeing and feeling your potter's hands lovingly at work, even now.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. After each prayer petition, please join me in saying, receive our prayer. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Call your church into holy fellowship and await the restoration of all things. Energize your people who live in hope and compassion, especially those who serve as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. All creation signals your presence, O God. The vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, the living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the nations tremble in your holy presence that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict, teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems, and bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Deliver all in any need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with those who keep awake at night, nurses working overnight shifts, caregivers of newborns and aging adults, stargazers, those who are anxious or those who are traveling. Reveal to all that the dark can be a place of calm, comfort, filled with your presence. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. You have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and place, calling them into faithful fellowship of saints. Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The peace of Christ be with you always. A few announcements about the ministry happening in this place. The first is that you, if you'd like to create an Advent wreath for use at your home, we will be gathering after worship on Sunday, December 3rd to make those Advent wreaths. We will also be having a potluck that day, and we encourage you to send in uh, or return your pledge cards for what you can give, how you can commit to this ministry in 2024. We also invite you to attend our movie night. We'll be watching The Star on Saturday, December 9th. We'll gather at 6 p.m. and start the movie at about 6.15. There will be popcorn and snacks. We hope you will join us. I also invite you to come to Second Sunday Jazz. We'll have some delightful Christmas music. That's on Sunday, December 10th at 5 p.m. We hope you'll join us for this wonderful Advent season and all the ways that we prepare together for the Christ child.
Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> 